Usman versus Jemayev part two. You got a problem with that? Got any problem with that? Part two, they're going to do it for five rounds. Do you have any part of you that doesn't want to see that? Is there any part of you that has a stronger urge to see Usman fight somebody else? Is there any party that has a stronger urge to see Chamaya fight somebody else? Usman versus Chamaya part two for five rounds. How does that sit with you? Probably sits just fine, doesn't it? Yeah. And willingness is so much to this sport that needs to be recognized and it also needs to be rewarded. Got to ask the question is where this is coming from. My partner, Ryan, asked me, where does Usman go from here? Should he go back to 170? Is there a path down there for, for what he wants? Should he stay at 85? You know, what, what is it that he should do? And, and that, of course, is a very tough question, right? Finding those paths is a very hard thing. If you find your way into a championship match and or contention for a championship match and it doesn't go your way, your age will be directly related to the probability of if you're going to find yourself in that shot and spot again. Now, it's going to be Chemaya versus Strickland. Okay? What I'm suggesting for you, and the reason I ask you, would you like to see Kamara versus Chemaya again, particularly if it was for five rounds? The whole reason I asked you that is I want Usman to be the backup fighter for Strickland versus Chamayo. Now, there would be no question that he would qualify to go straight in against Strickland. That wouldn't even be a question because they fought before and Usman won the match. But with the controversy surrounding this fight, and in all fairness, I didn't see it. I didn't see the controversy. I thought Chamayo beat him fair and square. But I still acknowledge the controversy exists. I still acknowledge that it was an awesome match. I still acknowledge that it was very competitive. And we all acknowledge that Kamar Usman was just as strong. Right? If you were to compare the way those two fought, Chemaya versus Usman, you get a whole bunch of different opinions. As a matter of fact, we officially got three opinions, and they were all different opinions. Right? We didn't have one single judge that agreed with his other judges. We had three different scores. So we, we, we can see that. But if you were to do an assessment of their post-fight interviews, that was 10-9 Usman. One gentleman was talking about fighting in a calm and concise way because he had plenty of energy and oxygen pumping blood to his brain. And another guy was so exhausted, it was very difficult for him to even speak. I don't fault them. I don't care who's more tired than the other one. I don't care at all. You should have no energy left when a fight is done. I've seen guys come out of fights with somebody go, oh, he looked out of shape. He looked really tired. He had better be tired. He had better have left everything he's got out there. So I don't fault Chemaya. But if we are going to do an assessment of the performance, there was two performances. There was the fight and then there was the interview. One of them could have gone another round. One of them could not. I've just shared, it's a very interesting thing. And the, this whole idea that Usman shouldn't be given an opportunity when he comes in on short notice and does battle to that degree, I'm not sure in a regular landscape that a rematch isn't exactly what we'd be pushing for. We just don't have that as an opportunity right now. It's not an option on the table because we said before the match what was going to happen with the victor. So now that we know that the victor being Shemaev is going to draw to Sean Strickland, we can't even have the conversation of a rematch. But had we not been given that piece of information, I think it's exactly what we'd be talking about today. I think it's all that we'd be talking about today. I think if that was not a number one contenders match, if we if, if a week ago we found out Adesanya and Strickland part two, and it's coming up in February. Just by example, after seeing what we just saw, I believe we would be demanding a main event, thus making it five rounds, rematch between Usman and Chemaev, 185, with a full camp for both of them. That's what I think the conversation would be. And I don't know how likely it is that Usman would ever get in. But it was unlikely that he was going to fight Chemaev at 185 pounds in a number one contenders match. In fact, it was an impossibility 13 days ago. 
So it's one of those spots, right? If you're picking your path, if you're going to go down to 170 and then you're just going to wait for this right opportunity, you're talking about a short notice fight. Well, how are you going to get ready for a short notice fight all the time? You got to cut weight, you got to pull weight. It's just not realistic at 170 pounds. Maybe he's got a different idea at 185 pounds. Perhaps. But it doesn't sound as though anybody's going to get the opportunity for number one contendership now. It's going to be Chemayev versus Strickland. You do have a massive question. What do you do with Duplisi? Just for example, what do you do? I don't believe that there's a scenario where he just sits on ice and comes back in. Duplisi himself was not an extremely sought-after fighter. He was one half of an extremely sought-after match, but that was a specific opponent. I just think Duplisi is going to have to do something. That's all I'm suggesting for you. I think there's a lot of really good options. I think the correct answer there is Paulo Costa. But the specific question that we're trying to debate during this very segment is what is it that Kamara Usman should do next? And before you start talking about what should a guy do next, we do need to establish what could he do? What are viable options? A massive opportunity presented itself 12 days ago. One 185-pounder stepped up to do it. I should say one athlete stepped up to do it. They actually couldn't find anybody within the weight class. Not one guy within the weight class. And I know it's been revealed to us that Jared Cannonier agreed to do it that hurt his MCL. I, I do understand that. But it's the old adage, if a tree falls in the woods, right? If, if nobody hears it, does it make a sound? So, so the fact that after the fact, we find out that Jared had agreed to do it, it's the same thing as he did, right? Not a single 185-pounder did it to the point that they had to go to a 170-pounder. I think that 170-pounder should be rewarded. I think he's in the right spot. I think we need to get a date for Strickland versus Chamayev. I think we need to understand all the 85 pounders are scared and they're not going to show up. They're not going to offer to do it. They're not going to want to do it. Even if they get put in the spot, if the, if the time actually comes, they're not going to step in the cage. But you can't say that about Usman, considering he's already stepped in the cage with both guys, the red corner and the blue corner, Strickland and Chamayev. If that came out and got announced that Kamara Usman was the backup for Jemaya versus Strickland, that would be very big news. That would sit just fine with the MMA community. And there was nobody that you could put in that position and have that announcement more well-received than Kamara Usman. And it's unlikely. I like to do parody, but I like to have change. But it's unlikely because... You hadn't thought of it until now. I think it's a solid idea. I'd appreciate your support.